Hello once again Java programmers. This video will introduce you to the notions of dynamic dispatch, a feature of Java that allows a special version of methods to get run depending on the class of whatever object is invoking the method. There are limits to this capability that we'll also explore. So, uh, wherever you are finding this video should be nearby a set of files that we'll be going through. Uh, the first of which is animals.java that introduces the basic notion of inheritance and dynamic dispatch. Uh, so up at the top, you'll see a small uh, object hierarchy is created, uh, the parent class being animal. Now keep in mind, despite the fact that it doesn't stay so, uh, all classes uh, that start an object inheritance hierarchy uh, extend object, uh, but we don't need to write that, so I'll leave it off for now. Uh, here's animal, and it has a single method proclaim, which is designed really only to push some strings out to the screen uh, via system.out.println. Uh, so on being asked to proclaim something, an animal will simply print it to the screen. Humans are a kind of animal, uh, and thus extend it, uh, and choose to slightly, uh, sorry, choose to do this proclamation slightly differently than their parent class. Uh, for instance, humans can actually say things due to their uh, big brain, so they'll be thankful for that every time they say something. Uh, mice, on the other hand, are not so well endowed in terms of gray matter, uh, so they'll only squeak, uh, and mice can't actually speak, so this argument S that's given in uh, will be completely ignored. Uh, mice won't actually be able to claim much of anything. Snakes are slightly smarter than that, uh, but they tend to talk with a lisp, uh, so they will depend on us to the end of everything they say. Ducks, not so smart, will quack instead of speaking, unless, of course, that duck happens to be a mascot, in which case uh, the duck will try to append uh, a corporate logo and sell you some insurance. Down here at the bottom uh, is a class animals. Uh, notice all these are not public classes, so they can coexist in the same .java file as animals. Dot, uh, animals is the only public class uh, and has a main method. It creates uh, an array of different animals. Uh, and notice the polymorphism that's happening. Polymorphism is a fancy word for many shaped. Um, the idea here is that since we have an array of animals, any kind of animal is able to fit inside of that array. Uh, includes your standard animal, but also more special animals such as human, mice, snake, duck, and mascots. All we're really going to do with that array of animals is zip through it and extend it for loops of syntax. Uh, for every animal A in the array of animals, uh, please ask that animal to proclaim something. So what will be interesting here is to see what's actually said by each animal. Now your suspicions are probably correct uh, that well, the reason we set up an object hierarchy in the first place is to allow special versions of the proclaim method uh, to be run or any other methods in other object hierarchies. Uh, so if I jump over to the right hand side here, uh, which is a Unix terminal, uh, and issue the compilation uh, command to please uh, java compile animals.java, uh, I should see in here now a whole bunch of classes, an animal.class, an animals.class, a uh, human.class, a duck.class, all these different classes that exist in this Java Java file have been created, and I should be able to run the main method of animals uh, and see a whole bunch of stuff printed out to the screen. Uh, these are the proclamations of the different animals. Uh, so the verse hello uh, is being printed by the standard animal up here. And if you recall, all uh, the proclamation method for animal does is push something out to the screen without modification. On the other hand, uh, the next bit of text I see is hello, thank you, big brain. Uh, the next thing that was in the array was in fact a human. And if you recall up here, the proclaim method of humans uh, thanks the big brain for their ability to speak. Uh, this goes on and on. Uh, mice uh, squeak, and that's what I see here. Uh, a snake was last to say hello, but will append its lisp, so hello. Uh, ducks can only quack, they can't speak, uh, except for mascot ducks, uh, which will display their corporate jargon uh, onto the screen along with it. So, uh, dynamic dispatch, very cool. Uh, there are a whole bunch of different proclaim methods sitting around in Java right now, uh, and the particular one that is run is whichever is most special to the kind of animal that is doing the running. There are limits to this dynamic dispatch capability, however. Uh, to demonstrate those, uh, we'll jump over to single dispatch.java. Uh, so, there is a similar object hierarchy in here of animal uh, and mouse and snake, and duck, 
uh, and mascot, uh, with a few variations. Uh, for instance, uh, the duck mascot is only going to um, say quack Aflac instead here, uh, and there are some invocations of super that you should play around with a little bit uh, in order to understand what's going on there. But paired up with that, uh, with these various classes, are also a bunch of static uh, identify methods. Now, make the screen a little wider so you can see, all these are really designed to do uh, are to identify the particular kind of animal uh, that is doing uh, or is passed in as an argument. Uh, so here's a version of identify uh, that takes an animal argument uh, and prints out I'm an animal. Uh, here's a mouse version uh, that's supposed to take a mouse uh, and print out I'm a mouse. Similarly for snake, duck, and mascot. There's nothing special uh, about these being static and void. We could instead make them instance methods of an animal or of the class single dispatch uh, or various other places. Uh, but this will suffice for our demonstration right now. Um, notice, however, that the specialization happens in the argument to the function, and that will be very important momentarily. Down here in the main loop uh, for the single dispatch class, uh, there is an array of animals, uh, an animal, a mouse, a snake, a duck, and a mascot. Uh, and down here we go through a similar main uh, loop in which we take out each animal, ask it to proclaim something, as was done in the previous file, uh, and also attempt to identify it. Now the a proclaim you will be get expected results, uh, look very similar to what we had before, uh, but the identify method is going to do something that is slightly unexpected uh, based on uh, our current understanding of what the uh, single dispatch is supposed to do. Uh, so let me jump over here again to the terminal. Uh, I'll Java C the single dispatch. Uh, it should create a whole bunch of classes again, uh, and then I'll run the main method of this guy. First thing to notice, uh, I see my hello from an animal, I see a squeak from a mouse, so hello from a snake, quack from a duck, and a quack aflac from my duck mascot. On the other hand, so uh, suffice to say the proclaim method is still working just as uh, it did in the previous animals.java uh, file. Um, on the other hand, this identify method is doing something kind of funky. Instead of printing out, I'm an animal, I'm a mouse, I'm a snake, and so forth, everybody says simply, I'm an animal. The reason for that is subtle. Uh, notice up here that we say each of these variables A is in fact an animal. There's no dynamic dispatch done on arguments, uh, function arguments in Java. So this A here is identified by the compiler as, ah, A is an animal. Where is the version of identify that is associated with animals, as in takes an animal argument? Uh, notice no invocation over here on the left-hand side, a dot nothing. Uh, instead, uh, we only have these guys up here that take uh, many different kinds of animals as an argument. So compiler will determine, ah, a is an animal. Uh, I will each time invoke this version, the one that takes an animal argument, uh, which simply prints out, I am an animal. Um, thus, there's a limit to the single dispatch business. Uh, the limit is you must say a dot something in order to get single dispatch. If instead a is an argument, it'll always be identified as an animal uh, or as whatever the compile time type of the class is. Only through the a dot proclaim is the actual runtime class of a determined and the appropriate proclaim method is uh, called. No, that doesn't happen with identify. Now this may seem like sort of a pittance, like a small limitation, uh, however there are some situations in which it would be really nice if you could get dynamic dispatch based on the argument kinds. Uh, for instance, um, suppose we were simulating some situation in which animals meet each other in the forest. Uh, for instance, if two animals meet each other, nothing special usually happens. Uh, however, if a snake meets, eats a mouse, uh, <laughs> if a snake meets a mouse, uh, the snake tends to eat the mouse. Uh, on the other hand, if a mouse sees the snake first, he will probably run away for fear of being eaten. If a snake meets a duck, uh, the snake will probably try to eat the duck and potentially have some uh, trouble uh, with his, his stomach. Uh, the duck would fly away from the snake, and a mascot would try to sell any other animal insurance uh, in the event of meeting a snake, for instance. So, suppose we were trying to simulate something like this in a game or a simulation or something along those lines. Uh, we'll put them all in a array uh, and ask, Please, each animal, we'll go through a doubly nested loop, meet each other and tell us what happens. Seems like a very like, sensible way to program this, a sensible way to do that, uh, but we'll be disappointed. Uh, on trying to compile the double dispatch, 
all will look well. Uh, and then on running it, we'll see a whole lot of nothing special happening, despite the fact there are ducks and mice and mascots meeting one another. The reason, again, is that each of these things uh, is identified first as an animal, animal X and animal Y. Uh, and the invocation of the meets method, uh, the arguments here are what determine which version of meets gets called. There's no uh, x dot meets y or y dot meets x or anything like that. Instead, it's just a meets x, y. Uh, so up here, uh, all we'll ever invoke is the animal version because x and y are identified as animals. Uh, so this is the version always that will get run, the one where nothing special happens. It would be nice in such a situation to be, uh, to be able to declare uh, functions that act in this way because it's very obvious to a user uh, or uh, very obvious that the correctness of this uh, follows through. Uh, unfortunately, Java just does not have this capability. There are other programming environments that do. For instance, uh, most common Lisp versions and uh, new Lisp versions, uh, such as Clojure, have a multiple dispatch facility that would allow you to program in the style that you see here. Unfortunately, we don't have time on our inclination to get into those other functional languages, uh, so that will be have, to, have to be something that you explore on your own. As for now, hopefully this has taught you a few things about dynamic dispatch in Java. Uh, the single dispatch facility is central to understanding how object and inheritance works in terms of specializing methods.